Okay, this is page six, and we actually talked about molar concentration uh, last uh, last week or last last time we uh, met, uh, and uh, we mentioned uh, that, uh, that we use the abbreviation, the capital letter M, to stand for the number of moles uh, per thousand milliliters, which is the same as a liter. Uh, now, as we mentioned last time, if the word mole it frightens you, it just means it's like conceptually like the word dozen. So if we talk about a one molar uh, solution, it means it's got one mole or one dozen, uh, let's say, salt molecules or glucose molecules in a liter or a thousand milliliters of water. If we had a two molar uh, glucose solution or salt solution, we put two dozen. Uh, uh, glucose or salt molecules in a liter of water. So that's all it is, if it, uh, is simply conceptually, it's a number of items. Uh, it's not really 12, which is what a dozen is, it's really uh, 6 followed by 23 zeros, known as Avogadro's number, it's a big number. Uh, we, sometimes we use a little m, big M, that just stands for millimolar, and that's the number of millimoles in a thousand milliliters of water, or a liter of water. So we had talked about this last time, and we gave you some uh, examples of this that you should have read over. And then on page seven, on page seven, uh, we gave you some problems to try on page seven. So uh, we, uh, the first question we asked is, how would you prepare a 0.15 molar? And I changed that, it was 1.5, I changed it to 0.15. How would you prepare a 0.15 molar salt solution? And then we asked uh, a point, and we changed that, a 0.15 molar salt solution would be equivalent to what percent concentration? So I don't know how many people tried these or not. You had some other problems very similar to these. Uh, but I'm going to work questions one and two for you right now. We'll work them out so everybody will see. It's very simple. And so that you shouldn't have any problem doing these. So uh, you can write this on any piece of paper, or you could just write it lower down on the page, right below the dashed line, which is what I did. All right. Now I know you're going to say, "Okay, give me a second to write this." It, it's okay. It's going to. Uh, I'm going to walk you through it. Now the 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 first thing it said, the question number one says, "How would you prepare a 0.15 molar salt solution?" Before you worry about pulling out your calculator. What does the capital letter M stand for? It stands for, and I wrote it in blue, moles per liter, or moles per thousand milliliters. So what we are trying to explain how to prepare is a solution that contains 0.15 moles of salt dissolved in 1,000 milliliters or a liter of water. Uh, if some people are good at chemistry, they have no problem, and there's other people where they see these word problems and they get all mixed up. I always recommend draw a picture. Just draw a picture. What we have learned that a solution is solute added to liquid. You'd say, when did you tell us that? On the first page of this handout. Any solution is simply when you add a solute to a liquid. So the solute we're adding is we're adding 0.15 moles of salt, right? And we're putting it in a beaker or a uh, graduated cylinder or a volumetric flask, some container holding, in this case, a liter or a thousand milliliters of water. So by drawing the picture, right, we got a beaker here, we put a thousand milliliters of water, and now we have to add 0.15 moles of salt. The problem is, this is like saying adding a dozen salt. We need to figure out how much does a dozen or a mole or 0.15 moles of salt weigh. So we already walked you through this last week. How do we figure out how much does 0.15 moles of salt weigh? So uh, first question is, how much would one mole of salt weigh? Now, uh, so we went through this last uh, week. Uh, a, a one mole of sodium weighs 23 grams, using the periodic chart. One mole of chlorine weighs 35 and a half grams, using the periodic chart. So one mole of salt molecules weighs 50. 23 plus 35.45 or 58.5 grams. If that's how much one mole of salt weighs, 
Well, two moles would weigh, of salt would weigh twice as much. A half a mole of salt would weigh half as much. A tenth of a mole of salt would weigh one-tenth as much. 0.15 moles of salt would weigh 0.15 times 58.5, or 8.775 grams. Now, we're not dealing with the subject of significant figures, which they talk about in a chemistry course, so I don't even care if you round this off to 9 grams. I don't care. So uh, all you're going to do is add uh, 8.775 grams of salt, or 9 grams of salt, weigh it out, and pour it in 1,000 a, a milliliters of water which is a liter of water. You stir it, and you have created a 0.15 molar salt solution. OK, that was how we do question number one. Now, question number two said, OK, a 0.15 molar salt solution would be equivalent to what percent concentration? Now, remember the symbol percent stands for grams per 100 milliliters. That's what the percent sign stands for, just like the capital letter M stands for moles per thousand milliliters. Uh -huh. So moles has to be grams. Well, in other words, we, we have to, if you wanted to add a mole of salt, you have to figure out how much does it weigh. Because a mole is like a dozen, and we don't have tweezers to count out 12 for a mole. So we, the, all we could do is figure out how much does a, a dozen or a mole or a half a mole weigh, and we weigh out that amount of salt, and then we pour it in the water. So when we say, how would you prepare it? That was the question. How would you prepare? Well, you have to, how you, if you, you had to make it, you'd have to weigh out 8.775 grams of salt and dissolve it in a liter of water. Does that make sense? That's how you'd make it. Well, because we told you that almost all solutions in biology or medicine are water. We said that last time. All right? It, it, we are, we're, our body is mostly water. It's 60% water. Almost anything that is given to somebody is going to be in an aqueous solution. All right? There are some few exceptions, but very few. But then they just say it's Yeah, if it's not to, said, stated uh, otherwise, the assumption is it's water. Yeah. Uh, that's what the pharmacist mixes up powders and water. They're not mixing it up and rubbing alcohol, okay, or gasoline. Um, the, uh, all right, so uh, uh, anyhow, uh, so then, uh, you know, as I pointed out last time, we said this is easy, so stay calm. Hint, look at your answer to number one above, and since it's expressed in grams per thousand milliliters, how would this concentration be expressed in grams per 100 milliliters? You'd say, well, how's that going to help me? Because the definition of a percent is grams per 100 milliliters. So if you already know how many grams of salt there is in 1,000 milliliters, then proportionally, how many grams would that be in 100? Well, let's look at below. In other words, and let's round 8.775 grams to 9. So if we know that a 0.15 molar salt solution is prepared by adding 9 grams of salt to 1,000 milliliters of water, and we want to convert that to percent, and what does percent mean? Grams per 100 milliliters. So 9 grams of salt is to 1,000 milliliters, as how many grams of salt would be in 100? All right? Now, real, whether you solve for x by cross-multiplying, or simply you appreciate that if you move the decimal point on the top and bottom one place to the left, you go from 9 grams to 1,000 to 0.9 grams per 100. So 9 grams of salt dissolved in 1,000 milliliters is proportionally the same as 9 tenths of a gram of salt dissolved in 100 milliliters. So therefore, since we have the abbreviation that stands for grams per 100 milliliters, it becomes 0.9%. Now, uh, all the solutions that I give you, everything I talk about in my handouts or on test questions, come right from clinical uh, settings. I don't make up anything. This is the second most common solution used in medicine, 0.9% sodium chloride. And uh, it's commonly called NS, normal saline. It's isotonic saline. And, uh, and, and so a 0.15 molar salt solution 
is equivalent to 0.9 percent. So uh, that's that's how you. Uh, so now that I've shown you how to go, once you know how many grams you to prepare a molar solution, once you know how many grams you add to a thousand milliliters of water, right? Then it's easy to convert that to a percent. <clears throat> now, uh, sometimes students will say, you know, Professor Fink, uh, life is tough. I'm really tired. This is a difficult class. I've got a lot of other things going on in my life besides just physiology. Can't you make this thing a little bit easier? Okay, I'm going to make it easier. Once you've explained how to prepare a molar solution in grams per thousand milliliters, uh, if you need to convert that to a percent, you ready? Once you've calculated how many grams you add in a thousand milliliters to make a molar solution, Move the damn decimal point one place to the left and put a percent sign. So 9 becomes 0.9%. Now, you should always understand why you're doing that.